Hello Anatomy and Physiology students, this is Ms. Johnson once again and we are just going to finish up your notes of the muscle unit, talk about some sources of ATP and what happens when your muscles get fatigued. Uh, these notes begin on page 54 of your packet of notes. Um, so when we talked about how a muscle moved, we talked a lot about how every time the myosin pulled that actin, it needed ATP. And if you remember, we we talked about ATP at the beginning of the school year. And ATP is this molecule that has three phosphates, one, two, three. And in order for this molecule to be energy, in order for it to in turn into energy, that bond has to break. That bond has to break. And, and, and that's how ATP contains energy. Um, there's three sources of ATP. The first source is called direct phosphoris phosphorylation. Um, and this is by uh, adding a creatine phosphate to ADP. If you remember, ADP stands for adenosine diphosphate, two phosphates. And in order to turn adenosine diphosphate, ADP, into ATP, you basically simply add one phosphate on there, one creatine phosphate. Great. You add a phosphate, boom, you got ATP. Here's the problem, is that you're only making one ATP at a time, so you're not making very much. And you can only use that energy for maybe 15, 20 seconds. Not very efficient. Another source, and the most popular source uh, of ATP, is the aerobic respiration. This occurs in the mitochondria. If you remember back in Unit 2, we learned that the mitochondria, you know, is the powerhouse of the cell. It's the one that creates the energy. And what the mitochondria does is it takes glucose, the food that you ate, you know, maybe you had for lunch today a hamburger. There's glucose in that hamburger. And that glucose ultimately gets broken down to a, a compound called pyruvic acid, okay? And when it glucose gets broken down to pyruvic acid, two ATPs, two molecules of adenosine triphosphate are released. Then that pyruvic acid is even further broken down into carbon dioxide and water and releases 34 ATPs. So taking one glucose molecules results in 36 ATP uh, molecules. That's a lot of energy. Um, the only problem with this process is that it needs oxygen. But what if, what if you were working out really hard and you were doing that step aerobic class and, and, you, and you weren't breathing enough oxygen to keep up with the, the ATP demand? Then your muscles would go into the third source of ATP um, um, source, the third source of ATP, which is anaerobic glycolysis. Um, basically, that's when lactic acid is formed. So it's, it's still kind of the same process as aerobic um, respiration, where you take glucose, the food that you ate, and turn it into pyruvic acid, and it releases 2 ATP. But here's the thing is that because you're not taking in enough oxygen, that pyruvic acid can no longer be turned into 34 more ATPs. So that pyruvic acid is instead turned into lactic acid. And we've all had a lactic acid buildup in our muscles before. It results in muscle fatigue and soreness. And the, the energy supply for lactic acid is not as, um, it's not as long as, say, if you were able to have enough oxygen and go through the aerobic respiration. Okay. So 95% of our ATP is produced through aerobic respiration, that second step that I was talking about. And on the second bullet of this PowerPoint, I've shown you the, um, the equation. Um, C6H12O6, that's glucose. Again, glucose is just sugar. That's the food that we eat. You know, if you ate pizza today, there was glucose in that pizza. Maybe you drank a Coke. There was glucose in that Coke. Okay, any of that sugar... Uh, plus a little oxygen. I mean, we all breathe, so you know you get oxygen from the air that we breathe. Taking that food plus the oxygen, um, our bodies are able to convert that those two compounds into um, carbon dioxide, which we all know that's what we breathe out. Uh, a little bit of water, and then lots of ATP. That is aerobic respiration. That equation right there. Um, now, let's say you don't have very good blood circulation or you can't breathe very well and the oxygen supply is low. If this element on this equation is low, then you can't make all this ATP on the, on the product side. Okay? Without ATP, your muscles can't contract. Your muscles get fatigued. So let's talk about muscle fatigue. 
Muscle fatigue is just when your muscles are unable to contract. Uh, even though the brain's telling them, hey, contract, um, there's not enough ATP for whatever reason, and your myosin molecules are no longer able to make those cross bridges. Um, the usual cause of lack of ox uh, ATP is the lack of oxygen. When there's not enough oxygen in your body, um, lactic acid builds up, right? That's anaerobic glycolysis. Again, you still make a little ATP in anaerobic glycolysis, but just uh, not as much as the normal aerobic glycolysis um, wet method. Um, without, with a low supply of ATP, muscles will contract less and less and less efficiently and just ultimately if, if the ATP molecules completely run out then they just stop contracting completely. Um, I don't know if you've ever had this experience but where you work out, you exercise so much and there's just no more energy left and then you just plumb can't lift that weight anymore. You just can't run another mile again. So um, that's what's happening. It's just you just run out of ATP. Um, that's why uh, when you exercise, when you're doing physical activity, you breathe harder. You ever notice that? You go run a mile and you start breathing harder and harder and harder. That's your body's way of keeping up with the oxygen supply. The harder you work your muscles, the more oxygen you need to keep up with the ATP supply. In order to get enough oxygen to keep up with all that ATP you need, you breathe harder. Huh. Okay, there's a couple of definitions you need to know. Um, isotonic contractions. Um, this is just a fancy way, isotonic contractions, of just basically the normal movements. When you contract your arm, when you contract your legs, your fingers, whatever muscle, and it creates movement. That movement, that contraction is called isotonic. Now there's isometric contractions. And this is when your muscles are contracting. And when the myofibrillates are trying to slide, when the myosin is trying to pull that actin, but it can't. Uh, it just builds up tension, okay? The, the myosin molecules want to row, but the actin molecules don't want to slide. And basically, so in that case, no movement occurs. The best example of this is if you're pushing against the wall. I mean, when you push against the wall, your muscles are contracting, you can see your biceps and triceps, but no movement is occurring. Those actin molecules are not sliding anywhere. That's called an isometric contraction. Muscle tone. Uh, muscle tone is just basically when your muscles are just partially contracted. This is a good thing. This is a healthy form of muscles. Uh, with muscle inactivity, if you don't work out your muscles, um, then your tone starts to deteriorate and you start having to wasting in muscles. So that's why it's really important to continue moving your muscles, even if you're bedridden or, you know, you're sick or this. Okay, so we talked about how aerobic respiration is our best f source of um, ATP. Some types of aerobic exercises are jogging, running, biking, elliptical. I'm sure you can think of several more. When you do aerobic exercise, uh, you increase the endurance of your muscles. You know, the more you run, the further you can go each time just because you're building up the endurance of your muscles. What's really happening is that you're building more mitochondria in those muscle cells. And therefore, if you have more mitochondria, you can store more oxygen and therefore make more ATP. So you can run longer um, and a little bit more efficiently each time. Um, you know, Aerobic aspirations have so many benefits. It helps with metabolism, digestion, coordination, um, just basically everything gets strengthened, your heart, your lungs, everything. But the thing is that aerobic respiration does not increase the size of the muscles. You don't get bulkier. Resistance exercise, um, that's when you're lifting weights or um, you know pushing up against a wall, doing push-ups, pull-ups. Resistance exercises do increase the muscle size. And with each enlargement of the muscle cells, you make more myofilaments, more actin and myosin. Uh, you don't really get more muscle cells, but you get more actin and myosin. Okay, so you basically make the, m the cells you have bigger. I mean, the best type of training is doing both types of exercise. Okay, that's it. You should have all of your notes for the muscle um, unit. Thank you so much for trying out this new method of flipping our class, and we'd like to hear y'all's feedback. Have a great afternoon.